Good morning, good morning everyone, and welcome to Sunrise Meditations. Uh, good to be back, good to be back. I um, hated to miss yesterday, but I had to do what, what I had to do. But um, thank you for those who checked in on me, and um, good morning um, to all the iHeart listeners. Glory be to God. Uh, coming from a different way today, coming from on the book of Lamentations. Coming from the book of Lamentations. Um, chapter 3 is something that um, God laid on my heart so it's just me <laughs> it's nobody else's books I'm going to uplift today glory be to God but coming from the book of Lamentations so let me get that together for you guys Amen. once you come on just hit share if you're on the replay good afternoon good evening as well amen but the book of, Remit- uh, book of Lamentations chapter 3 uh, verse 31, verse 21, 21, 21. And it says, this I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because his, compa- because his compassions fail not. And that's really the verse I want to lift up today is verse 22. Um, they are not, oh, excuse me, they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good. And to them that wait for him. Catch that. The Lord is good for them that wait for him. The Lord is good unto them <laughs> that wait for him. I got to say it again. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him to the soul that seeketh him. You catch that. To the soul that seeketh him. Um, it is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait. For the salvation of the Lord, it is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. He sitteth alone and keepeth silence because he hath borne it upon him. He putteth his mouth in the dust. If so, be there may be hope. Um, I'll explain that one later. Um, Lamentations, once again, Lamentations chapter 3, starting at verse 21. I'm not at verse 29. He putteth his mouth in the dust. If so, be there may be hope. Um, he giveth his cheek to him that smiteth not, that smiteth him. He is filled full with reproach for the Lord would not cast off forever. Verse 32, but, but though he caused grief, but though he caused grief, ooh, God, God can cause grief, understand this. Yet will he have compassion according to the multitudes of his mercy. Verse 33, for he doth not afflict willingly nor grieve the children of men to crush under his feet all the prisoners of the earth, to turn aside the right of man um, before the face of the Most High, to subvert a man in the cause the Lord approveth not. Verse 37, who is he that saith, and it cometh to pass when the Lord commandeth it not, out of the mouth of the Most High proceedeth not evil and good. Amen. Amen, amen. So that's Lamentations chapter 3, kind of long today, but verses 38 through, um, 21 through 38. Um, but here in the book of Lamentations, you know, we, it's only five, what they call five poems. And so chapter 3 is what they call the fifth, I mean, it's called what they call the third poem of Jeremiah. I got to push this back just a little bit. My book is thick. <laughs> My book is thick, yes. So thanks for sharing, thanks for sharing. And so really when you, when you read this um Jeremiah, of course, we know him as the weeping prophet. He's also in here. He's he's lamenting on the sufferings that he has endured. Okay, he is lamenting over the sufferings in which he is redo- which he is um, enduring. So even between verse verse one, if you go back and read verse one of chapter three, and all the way up to verse twenty, uh, yeah, it's pretty much up to verse twenty. Hmm. Or actually, twenty-one. There's thirty-two sufferings in those in those in those verses. There's there's twenty. There's thirty-two sufferings that he has um, endured from his enemies. Endured from his enemies. Thirty-two. And one of the things you read at um, you read at verse eighteen. So whenever we're going through, whenever we're being attacked, we may feel like what Jeremiah is going through. Um. Say, for instance, I'll, I'll read some of these that he's went through, and I'll summarize some of these from, from verses 1 through through 21. He says, um, I have seen affliction by the rod of his wrath. Um, he has led me into darkness, but not into light. Against me he has turned, he's, 
He's turned against me all day. Um, he has made my flesh and skin old. He has broken my bones. He has built it against me. He has compassed me with gall and and travail. He has set me in dark places as, as they are dead of old. So he's going through and explaining pretty much how he is feeling because of what is happening um, to him from not just to him, but also Israel and, and Judah. But he's he's going through and explaining um, and lamenting to God about what he's going through. The key thing that I found here was verse 18 because he says, And I said, and and I said, my strength and my hope is perished from the Lord. Have you never not have you never have you never been in a situation where you feel like your hope in God is gone, where you feel like your strength in God is gone, is is zapped out, is tapped out. I don't know what else to do. I keep getting hit this way, I keep getting hit that way from all matters of direction. I'm just being bombarded and my strength in God has started to leave and my hope in him has perished. Now he said perish past this mean that he has no more hope in God. It is gone. It is wiped out. It is zero. Empty. Like your gas tank. Empty. I can't go no further. And then 19, he says, remembering my affliction and my misery, the wormwood and the gal, my soul have half them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. So as he's remembering these things, he's also becoming humble. And then here's the key thing. This is the thing that we have to remember. And this is the thing that kind of really just draw me to this whole particular section is that verse 21 is, and this I want, this I want you guys to be encouraged by, this I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. OK, so even as we're going through as much um, turmoil that we may be going through and, you know, whenever we're going through a rough season, we believe it's the worst thing that we've ever been through. But he's saying that this I recall to my mind, therefore, have I hope. So despite everything I just said, <laughs> despite everything I just uh, um, I just I just um, spit out in the, in this uh, in this chapter, it is of the Lord's mercy. Verse 22, that we are not consumed because his compassion failed not. So he had to go back somewhere and remember the times that God's mercy did not consume him. Even though it was the worst of his life, even though, even though it was the worst probably in his lifetime at that particular time. Because we've been through some things that we thought was the worst and now we can look back and we can only say what? It was only but the Lord's mercy that we were not consumed. Hope you catch this. That it was only it was only because of the Lord's mercy I was cannot consume. Even though I was in a bad place, I was in a dead place, I was in a pit. I was I was in a situation that I knew I shouldn't have got myself into. Even if it was something that was from the Lord and He wanted to test me through something, I have to recall in my mind. Mm, I have to recall in my mind, and therefore have I hope because if God has brought me out then, I'm sure His mercy will bring me out now. I'm trying not to preach now. <clears throat> we have to think. Think about. I want you to recall, 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 recall. I need you to say recall. Recall in your mind. Therefore, I have hope that it is of the Lord's mercy. Think back of the mercies of God. Think back of, of how God prolonged your life. Think back when you were sick and you was diagnosed with something that was supposed to have killed you. Think back when you mistreated your body and you know you should have been dead and sleeping in your grave. Think back, think back, think back. Recall of these things and understand that it is only because of the Lord's mercy that you were not consumed. That alone should give you a shout. That alone should make you get up out your bed and live with purpose. Because it was only with it's only because of the Lord's mercy that I was not consumed. Make it personal. It was only because of the Lord's mercy I was not consumed. Because what? Because of God's compassion fails not. God's compassion fails not. This series I'm going to do for the rest of the week is called... Um, Ah, uh, what is it called? It's called the divine, the the divine compassion of God, the divine compassion of God. So today I'm coming from God. God's mercy prolongs life. God's mercy has prolonged our life. And when you look back, you look back over your days, whether you've been through um, any time, any form of domestic violence, you've been violated in any type of way, you've been left, you've been abandoned. Men feel abandoned. They feel rejected because their fathers are not in their life. Um, maybe their mothers weren't nurturing enough to them. And so they ended up, we, we find ourselves doing a whole lot of different things. Maybe we've been fighting our daddies and mamas demons for so long and that we've been labeled by our behavior, but our behavior is not who we are. 
But we have to understand, we have to process this verse 22, that because of his compassion, God's compassion on me, I've, I've failed, he's failed not, he's failed not in my life, and he has failed not in your life. God's mercy is still reigning supreme, even today, on this Thursday morning, what, God gives us what? New mercies. He gives us new mercies. He gives us new mercies. Verse 23 says what? What I just said. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. God is faithful. He is faithful to give us new mercies. Many of us went to sleep and didn't pray. Many of us went to sleep and didn't ask God to forgive us. Many of us have done a lot of things before the Lord and have not asked one, one time for him to forgive us. We didn't even acknowledge our sin. We didn't acknowledge our mess. We didn't thank him for bringing us through a day. And sometimes we do. We pass out and go to sleep. We're tired. But these are the things that we have to remember. That So think about Jeremiah. Think about all the things this weeping prophet went through. He disclaimed 32, 32 sufferings between verse 1 and verse 21. 32 sufferings. But on that, on that last one, he says, this I recall. This I recall. So we can murmur and complain and we can murmur and complain about life and, and how life is doing us wrong and how life is doing us this and we can do that. But somewhere in your mind, you have to recall. You have to recall the mercies of God that's been on your life. You have to recall how God's mercy has prolonged your life. Every time you went to get a blood check, every time you went to get your blood work done, Praying that you don't have HIV. Praying you don't have AIDS. Praying you don't have whatever other STDs out there. Because you know you lived a lifestyle where you should have caught something. Should have had something in your bloodstream. But God's mercy, his compassion failed not. His compassion for you failed not. It failed not. So here what we hear is the, we hear the prophet who spoke as a representative of all the suffering of Israelites, pointing them in the character and, and, and good dealings of Jehovah. So in spite of everything, because what, what these prophets did back in the day, they actually experienced what God was going to do to Israel. They physically experienced what God was going to do to Israel. And so, and, and, and prophets who really have a heart for God's people, prophets who really have a heart for God's people they're going to weep because they they hear that prophets should prophets spend a lot of time in prayer they spend a lot of time in the presence of God and so to know God's heart before his people can cause you to weep those who are who are constantly in prayer constantly um, not asking God for things but seeking the heart of God seeking the will of God for his people Seeking what is, what is, what is, God, how do you feel about your people today? How do you feel about your people in this earth, in this region? What is, what is going on? What caused you to weep? What caused you to weep? And so there's eight characteristics that I want to share with you about Jehovah during this time. And I want to let you know that, let you know how, how good our Father is to us. To let you know how good he is to us. First and foremost, he's merciful. He is merciful to us because once again, he has given us new mercy. Even on this Thursday morning, he has given us new mercy. He doesn't give us no rollover. He doesn't give us no leftovers. He gives us brand new mercies. And my thing is, let's not abuse the mercy that God has given us. Let's not let our cup of mercy overflow because we keep just going on a on, on a rampage that well then if, if God's giving me new mercy I can do what I want to do when I feel like doing it no this is not the 60s or the or the or the, or the early 70s uh, when, when the saying was if it feels good do it no this is not the time but even though people are doing that in these last days they are doing it they are lovers of their own flesh so they justify what they do and still proclaim that they are a child of God no you're not because he's going to say in that time He's going to say, get away from me, you workers of iniquity, or you workers of wickedness. That's what, that's what iniquities mean, that you are doing wickedness. So even though you may look like you're doing great things, amen, 
You got the people shouting. You got them passing out when you slap oil on their forehead and you palm on their foreheads for them to fall down. And then you're doing all these things that, that just amuse us in church, okay, in these services. But behind the scenes, God knows that you have no relationship with him. Behind the scenes, God knows that you're not living a pathway that's that's according to his ways. And so, yes, I want you to I want you to understand this. <laughs> when that day comes and he says, get away from me for I don't know you, is because... Of course, the things you did, what you do, what, what the Bible say in Matthew 7, 21 through 23, you did it in whose name? You did it in my son's name. You did it in my son's name. So whatever do, whatever you do that you call out in my son's name is going to be done because I, God still has a will. Only thing, he still has a will to get done in the earth. He still wants his glory to be, be revealed in the earth. The only thing God needs is a willing vessel. He didn't say the willing vessel has to be perfect. Because he's given us dominion and authority over the earth, then then God can't himself just come through. So he needs a body. He needs a physical body because he gave us, you and I, dominion on the earth. So in order for his dominion to be established in the earth, we have to be willing vessels. So when we say yes to God, when we say yes to God, it doesn't mean that we're, we're totally upright with God. God knows everything about us. <laughs> he knows your secret thoughts. He knows your thoughts before they even form. He knows some of us that, that if, if he used us to do great exploits, that some of us are going to be prideful. And we're going to try to build a brand instead of build him. And so now we're going to try to launch ourselves launch ourselves out into deep, into the deep like we're some great wonder. And we're not. But many of us feel that we could because we we know the ins and outs, quote unquote, of of, of religiosity, that we can do anything behind the scenes. Woe unto you. <laughs> woe unto you and that's all I'm going to say woe unto you because you cannot you cannot so God is merciful do not forget that and even in, in your Bibles highlight verse 30, highlight verse 22 it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed if you can catch this and if you really can process this you, you would appreciate life so much better you would appreciate life so much better knowing that the only reason that you're still here is because God's mercy did not consume you. He did not consume you out of the wickedness and all the all the evil stuff that you've done. He did not. It was his mercy that saved you. Not his grace. We confuse grace and mercy. It is his mercy. Okay, it's his mercy. And then go down to verse 32. But though, but though he caused grief, yet will he have compassion according to the multitudes of his mercies. Not only God's mercies have been upon you, what about those who have interceded for your behalf for God to have mercy on you? Mm. Because you won't get out your mess. Because you won't get out your wickedness. Because you keep hanging around folks and you won't set a standard and you allow people to compromise your standard with God. Because you want to be in the who's who. Stop compromising. Stop compromising. Because if you can't set a standard for God, and if you're worried about being, <clears throat> this is the sad thing. Why are we so much concerned about people approving us instead of God? Why are we so, so concerned about those, quote unquote, in our inner circle, our church circle? Why are we so concerned about them approving us? Like they have a heaven and hell to put us in. Then pleasing God. Pleasing God. We don't want accountability. We don't want to hold nobody accountable. And we, we got this misconception that the devil is playing out here. Nobody can judge me but God. You are wrong. You are wrong. It's the same matter that you judge people, the same matter you're going to be judged. So how but we do I those that listen to me, those of you, <laughs> glory be to God, that that know me, if you see me doing something out of pocket, out of line with God. All you have to do is just bring me the scripture. Hey, forget the title, Andre. Look, man. <laughs> I see you doing this, man. This ain't right. If you, you bring me the word, what can I say? If I call myself a follower of Christ, if I call myself a man of God or whatever, what right do I have to get, what right do I have to ignore you when you bring me the word of God? See, people don't want the word of God to be put on them because we come up with so many excuses. 
We come up with one excuse after another excuse after another excuse. And it makes no sense. It makes no sense. Knowing that tomorrow is not promised. Knowing that even though we're, we're here together this morning, who's to say that by noon one of us don't pass away? Who to say by midnight? We don't know. We don't know. The Bible says, what you worrying about tomorrow for, and tomorrow has its own troubles. <laughs> Let's take care of this day. Let's take care of this day. So, highlight verse 32 and 22 in Lamentation chapter 3. The next thing about God is he is compassionate. God is compassionate towards us. He is compassionate towards us. One thing my spiritual father said about holiness, he said holiness is not about us, not about us being perfect, but it's, it's about us having a single aim to please God. A single aim to please God. Okay? Even uh, even my, my daughter came to me and she was talking about the Ten Commandments and, and I was telling her that God is a jealous God. God is, he's, um, he's a jealous God. He doesn't want any idols. He doesn't want us to place anything or anyone that gets more attention than him. Okay? No male, no female, no son, no daughter, uh, no mama, no daddy, no big mama, <laughs> you know, no gramps, none, none of them. You know, not your car that you washing and waxing on Sunday mornings when you should be in there. Um, so you're going to forsake the fellowship of the upright because you want to make sure your car is clean on Sunday. Or because you like to go to the casino and hang out and then you stayed out too late and so now you're too tired. You're too tired to go fellowship in the morning. But he's compassionate towards us. He's compassionate. Uh, another thing that, that Jehovah is to us, he's faithful. He is faithful. Verse 23, um, they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. He is faithful. God is faithful to give you new mercies every day. Every day. I missed not doing the show yesterday. And so, but God does not miss his faithfulness. He does not miss his faithfulness. Glory be to God. He does not miss his faith. God is so faithful. He is so accountable. How can you not count on God? How can you not count on his word? The fourth thing that God is, he's good. <laughs> Verse 25. The Lord is what? He's good. The Lord is good unto them that wait. We have to learn how to wait on God. We have to learn how to wait on God. And that's why when we have a time with the Father, we wait on Him. We wait. We have no time restrictions. We're not in a rush to leave just because we started at 3, which that time is changing. But even though we started at 3, <laughs> we didn't get out till 8 o'clock last Sunday. Glory be to God. Laboring with our sister. Amen. So she can get everything that God has for her. Glory be to God. We, we wait on God. We want God to, to have time to do and say whatever he wants to say. We don't rush God. We don't rush God. And we treat God just like, just like we got a pot roast on, in the slow cooker. We set it for two hours and by the, time it's, by the time we come back home, dinner's done. No, we wait on God. Do you know and understand what it? Maybe I, I'll, I'll talk about that. Um, what it means to wait on God. Verse twenty-five: The Lord is good unto them that wait for Him. Wait for Him to the soul that seeketh Him. Does your soul seek God? Because when you're seeking God with your soul, your will, your emotions, your intellect, you're seeking God. That's what you're waiting. You're waiting. What's the, what's the best way to wait on God as you go through your day? Meditate. Meditate on him like Joshua said. Meditate on him day and night. Meditate on the Lord. As you're waiting for God to deliver. And even as you're waiting, look. <laughs> look around. Glory be to God and see where God is going to bring your answers. Look up. Look around. You don't know how he's going to bring whatever you're waiting for. Look. Look with expectancy. But he said, the Lord is good unto them that wait for him. So why are we rushing God? And we have to understand God does not operate in our time. God does not need our time. The other thing that God is, he's a deliverer. And how many things has God delivered you out of? Verse 26, it is good that a man should both hope 
and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. He has delivered me out of so many things. He's delivered you out of so many things. So one, he's merciful. Two, he's compassionate. Three, he's faithful. Four, he's good. Five, he's a deliverer. I'm meeting people that God has brought them, has changed their whole life. Living other types of, um, coming out of different types of sexual perversions and things of that nature. And God is just, even myself, and God has brought us out of so many different things. Our mind was warped. Our mind was locked in and, and we were a slave to sin, as, as, as um, Paul talks about it in Romans chapter 6 and 7, really, when he talks about those things. We were a slave to sin. And so when, when you've come out of something that you've been enslaved in, that thing, that thing that had you in bondage, you have more compassion for other people that are going through. Now, for those of us who've been, quote unquote, a happy-go-lucky Christian throughout our life, and we haven't went through anything major, you know, we've we've been, you know, steadfast and we, we've been okay, then then amen for you. But for those of us who had to fight, crawl, kick, scream, and, and, and God delivered us from something that we don't have no desire to go back to the vomit we just came out of, we have more, but I'm not even going to say we all, many of us have compassion for those who are going through. It may not be the same thing. But when you're in bondage, you're in bondage. When you're in, when you're in sin, you're in sin. When you've been, when you've been, when you've had a, when you've had a proclivity that you've been practicing all your life, you become that sin. You become that sin. And so to see people at the altar wanting to be break, one one to break free, or you see the struggle within their soul because they struggle because they don't want to do what they do. Even though, you know, even, even though I want to do one thing to, to please God, but yet there's this other thing, you know, that evil is always present. It's always tempting me. It's always there trying to capture me. It's trying to alter my path of pleasing God to please my flesh. And I say this all the time. Your flesh is not your friend. I don't care how you decorate. I don't care how much men we get our haircut, get our beard trimmed, you know, put on a nice suit and tie, however you want to dress. Women, you put on your makeup, you know, you're getting that weed put in, wearing your natural hair, however way you're doing it, it still ain't your friend. Because when you're, what, who do you battle the most? We don't battle our brothers and sisters. When we battle our flesh, especially if you have a desire to live for God, you have a desire to live for God, your biggest enemy is yourself. Your biggest enemy is yourself. You're only tempted when something inside of you lusts for something. Temptation comes in all different sizes, forms, shapes, and whatever, and it's not just sexual. Temptation can come anywhere. You can be tempted by food. Some people are tempted because they love the gossip. Number six. He's just and righteous. Our Father is just and righteous. Verse 31. For the Lord will not cast off forever. For the Lord will not cast off forever. He will not. Forever. Why? He will not cast off forever. For one, if, if, if men repent, if men repent, he will not cast us off forever. He refused to have compassion on those whom he chastens if they, if they turn to him. If we turn to God, he's just and righteous for you and me. There's a lot of things we deserve that he did not give us. He did not give us the reward of the sin that we've done. He did not give us the reward of the wickedness that we've been doing. He is just and righteous towards us. He is just and righteous towards us. Number seven, he's long-suffering. Our father is long-suffering. Verse 33, for he, for he doth not afflict willingly, nor grieve the children of men. He is long-suffering towards us. Long-suffering. Many of us have been in sin for a long, long time. A long time. And he's been long-suffering with us. And I'm going to throw this word in there. He's been patient with us. 
And matter of fact, he has listened to all our lives. What do you mean? Because the word says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. If you love me. So how do we prove our love to God? By obeying his word. So when we don't obey his word, I'm going to just make it plain. We don't love God. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. You can justify it all you want to. But it's his word says, if you love me, you would keep my commandments. You would obey me. You would die to yourself and follow me. You would sacrifice whatever it is to please me. To honor me. To worship me. You will place no idols above me. For I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a jealous God. A jealous God. So. He's long suffering towards us. Many of us are crying. We're crying to God. God why me? Why is this happening? Why is that happening? Why is this happening? But we're not trusting God. We're not asking God, God, why is this happening to me? Lord, um, what, what is it that you want me to learn while I'm going through this? Don't think that you're going to go through this, this Christian walk or you're going to be a follower, I like to say a follower of Christ, and not go through some form of persecution. How are, you, how are we going to be able to identify in, in, a, in a smallest way possible of what Christ has went through? How are we going to help somebody if we don't go through? How are we going to see? How is God going to show us what's really, truly inside of us if we don't go through some things? If we don't overcome some things? And the last one is our Father is kind. Jehovah is kind. He is kind toward us. He's very kind toward us. We know. We know. If you do a real, if you do a real self-examination, you know. God's been very kind to you. You know that some of the wicked stuff that you did, some of the sinful things that you've done, you know God should have took you out. He should have wiped you out. Whether during, during your sickness, whether during car accidents, they should have took you out. A whole lot of things. He could have took you out. So he's merciful. He's compassionate. He's faithful. He's good. He's our deliverer. He's just and righteous towards us. He's, he's very long-suffering with us. And he's kind. That's eight. I'm going to throw in nine. He's patient. He's patient. But understand that we anger God when we are disobedient. When we are constantly disobedient, we anger God. We anger him. And so, you don't believe me, I'm about to show you. I'm about to show you. Just so you know, so you don't think I'm lying. <laughs> but I want you to know that. Understand that no matter what you've been through, what you're going through, I want you, I want you to remember the word recall. Recall in your mind how God did not take you out because of his compassion. Okay? I'm going to have to find it. I know it's in Colossians chapter 3. Okay. I'll find it. Can't find it right now. So, remember this. And, and take the time to read Lamentations chapter 3. So, as I said before, those who came on late, and in Lamentations chapter 3, in verses 1 through actually 20, uh, Jeremiah is, is lamenting about everything that is, that is happening to Israel. And to him personally, 
of the things that they've been coming up against him as the prophet. And verse 18, I'm just recapping real quick. He said, and I said, my strength and thy hope is perished from the Lord. It means that his strength is gone from God and he no longer has hope in God. It is gone. It is it's gone that everything that I've done, everything I've tried to do, and I keep getting, everything keeps coming at me this way, that way, and every other way. It is gone. I have no more strength in God, and I have no hope. I have no hope that he can deliver me. I have no hope that he can come through for me. I just have, matter of fact, I've lost my faith. How about that? I've lost my faith in God. I've lost it. I'm remembering my afflictions and my misery, the wormwood and the gal. He said, my soul hath them still in remembrance and is humbling me. So even, so uh, when you, when you've been through so much and you've been attacked on every side, it humbles you because you have nowhere else to go. There's no way pride, any, any form of pride can stand within you because you've been hit on every side. You've been attacked on every side. You've been persecuted on every side. You've been lied on. You've been talked about. You've been backstabbed. You've been this, you've been that. And there's, there's nothing left in you. We find people like this, sometimes they even stop attending services. They stop going to church. They stop praying. Um, they don't read their word anymore. They just they just flat out give up. They just flat out give up. But I want verse 21 and 22 to be your strength today. And then he says, this I recall to my mind. What is these things that he recall? These are those eight things I just read to you. I recall that God is merciful. I regard, I, I recall that God is passionate. I recall that God is faithful. And I recall that God is good. He's been good to me. I mean, you see, you got it. You have to make this personal. You have to make this personal. So when you begin to recall, I recall when God was merciful to me. I recall when he was very compassionate towards me. I recall when he was faithful. I recall when he was good to me. I recall when he delivered me. I recall when he was just and righteous towards me. I recall when he was long suffering with me. And I recall when he was kind to me. This I recall to my mind. Therefore have I hope that it is of the Lord's mercy. See, first in 18, he said he's lost hope. Go back in 18, he says he's lost. He said his hope has perished from the Lord. His strength has perished from the Lord. But now, in verse 21, this I recall. So when you begin to recall on the goodness of God and all the things that he's done for you, <laughs> all the times he's brought you out, uh, when your car should have been repoed and it wasn't, when your house, when you should have been evicted and you wasn't evicted, glory be to God, um, when you didn't have any money and somebody blessed you with money, when you begin to recall how God has touched the people, touched people around you to bless you, to help you, some people have been assigned to you to bless you and help you in your ministry, um, in, in, in your business and whatever it is it is. This I recall in my mind, therefore have I hope. So in the midst of recalling, in the midst of recalling these things about who your heavenly father is, your hope will return. Your hope in him will, will return. And it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. God's mercy prolongs our life. He has prolonged our life because of his mercy. It is not anything that you've done. You can earn it. It's just because of God's mercy. Because we all know there's some point in time in our life that we should have been gone. We should have been out of here, checked out. It's because of his mercy. We are not consumed. And I want you to understand that. Because of his mercy, we are not consumed. We're not consumed. So that's all I have for you for today. I'll be back tomorrow. I'm going to piggyback, I'm going to piggyback on this tomorrow. Got some more things I want to talk about in regards to God's compassion for us. I got a whole list of scriptures that deal with God's compassion over his people. And so um, I pray that you are blessed by this. I pray that you are encouraged by this. And understand the eight characteristics of Jehovah. And understand that he's merciful, he's compassionate, he's faithful, he's good, he's a deliverer, he's just and righteous. 
He's just and righteous. He's long-suffering and he's kind. And add one more there. Add patience. He is patient. He's a patient father. And that, that really fits in with long-suffering. Long-suffering. But I want you to understand, I pray that you you, you all have gotten something out of this. Amen. Um, it really blessed me. Um, just remember to recall. Go back. Go back. When you think that all hell is broken loose in your life and you, you're fighting and crawling every day um, to make ends meet, just remember how many times God has brought you through. Remember the faithful things of God. Remember those things. Okay? Remember how God, the reason why we are still here today, and even, even when the enemy tried to take you out and tried to afflict our bodies, so on and so forth and whatever, it is God's mercy that has prolonged our life. It is God's mercy <laughs> that has prolonged our life. You know, the times we was out in the club, you know, I remember my father telling me when I started to go out, he said, whatever you do, don't leave your cup. Take your cup with you. If you go to the bathroom, take your cup with you. You leave your cup, go get a new one, because you never know what, what somebody do to your drink. You know, one of my best friends growing up, his brother, somebody put something in his drink. He's been messed up ever since. Mine's messed up. Because of the Lord's mercy. We're out here having having unprotected sex. You know what you were doing. Thank God your blood is clean. Amen. <laughs> Thank God God has healed you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So we want to be thankful for those things. We want to recall. We want to recall. So if you feel like you've lost hope, you feel like your hope is perishing, God, you feel like you, you don't have any strength, I'm telling you right now, recall. Recall. Remember. Remember what God has done for you. Remember who your father has been to you. Remember. 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 And when you remember how God has brought you through this and he's carried you through that, and how he's strengthening you, so on and so forth. Those times, even those times, thank you, Holy Spirit. Even those times when you said it, I can't make it anymore. I'm tired. And I don't want to give up. But yet you're still here. Yet you are still here. Understand that his compassions fail not. His compassions for you. His mercies for you. Can, they fail not. They fail not. And so that's it for today. I pray that you've been blessed. And I'll be back tomorrow morning. At 7 a.m. Hey, Amen. God bless you. Or a little after, but I'll be on, I'll be on tomorrow. So I love you guys. Take care.